Toronto Talk Sports and More has back here alongside my high courts and we're very glad to be joined by former 16-year MLB player. He was a World Series winner early in his career in 1997 with the Florida Marlins. He played here in Toronto for our hometown Blue Jays from 2004 to 2008. He's also a baseball analyst as well as a public speaker. The manalist is in the building, Mr. Greg Zahn. Hello there. What's going on, Greg? Not a whole lot. Thanks for having me. <laughs> this, uh, this is very exciting. I'm yes, a, sir. I'm well, listen, here. man. Thanks for coming in. So first things first, the Manalist. Tell us the story behind that nickname. How did that originate? Well, Ken Reed's the guy that, that, that dubbed me the Manalist. All right. <laughs> Obviously, just adding an M to the word Analyst gives you the... <laughs> uh, but you know, while during my time on television, I was I was known for the suits and yeah. the the scotch yeah, drinking <laughs> and uh, on the rocks or uh, off the rocks. It depends on how good the scotch is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the scotch, all a right. blend of, a blend will uh, like my go-to is you know Johnny Walker Black. It's all right. Uh, he's a good friend of mine. Johnny nice. W um, for the win. <laughs> yes, and it will drink that on the rocks all day long. But if you if you throw a nice single malt in front of me, we. Just drink it neat. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, that was I guess that was my whole persona. I mean, I'm a former athlete. I like my suits. I like my trucks. I like right. my, my whiskey. Um, a man's man. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. So there's the there's the whole thing with the you know the man list, and so I just kind of ran with it. And, All right. I mean, I didn't I, I didn't it didn't bother me that I had that. <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of them floating around, but that, that one was pretty cool. Right. All right, cool. Awesome. Well, Greg, thanks again for joining us here, man. Uh, let's talk about those suits of yours. I mean, we know that you're a guy of fashion, and me, myself, you know, I take pride in my appearance. I like the way uh, you carry yourself and you present yourself. A lot of times when we turn on the TV to watch you, we're like, we don't necessarily, although we'd love to hear what you have to say, <laughs> sometimes we tune in, what's he going to be wearing today? What, what's he going to be wearing? Tell us, man, where did this sense of fashion come from, and uh, where do you get your suits? Maybe you can uh, recommend me to your tailor. Well, uh, I used to get them from a company called Garrison Bespoke, but now I'm getting them from Indochino. Nice. And because, you know, Indochino for me, um, you can't beat what these guys are doing. Yeah. We were talking about five to six hundred bucks for a custom made suit and they can deliver it to you in four four weeks come on wow. i mean it's it's I, if you've never been sized up for a custom suit yeah. you got to do it now awesome. the, Great the, experience. the genesis of my of my fashion sense or whatever came from the fact that you know my, early on in my childhood i went to catholic school nice. and we wore what they call tough skins I mean, they might have sold them here at Sears, at sears in canada yeah. And they're the most god awful pants in the world. <laughs> like you could literally slide on the asphalt schoolyard in them while you were playing oh, kickball, geez. and they wouldn't <laughs> tear up your knees. That's how rough these things were. And our parents would buy these hideous. We like our uniform was a red sweater, a white shirt, and brown pants. Wow! Oh, Picture wow. that. <laughs> <laughs> could it just be navy blue, <laughs> white, and red? Like no nope, brown? Nope, nope. No. Oh, and and then of course. You know, when you're young, the parents want to buy stuff that you can grow into, of or at least it lasts for yeah. a while. Right. So the hems would be like eight inches long on a kid four foot two. <laughs> I'm literally picturing that right and now. When you, and when you finally grew into those, you were growing out of the waist, but then there'd be this line oh, when they unfolded it. So I ended up going to the public school for a couple of years because my mom didn't like the fact that. The Catholic priest was asking us to put more money in the uh, collection basket <laughs> wow. each week wow. while he was sitting in his hot tub out at the rectory driving yep. a Cadillac. Of course, so whatever that money's going to. <laughs> so my mom, my mom was like, "Okay, we're going to take a break from the Catholic school for a little while," and I went to public school. Mm. Well, in public school, kids are dressing up, yeah, and yeah. When, in my day, it was. Maui and Sons. It was all about the surfer look growing up in Southern California, yeah. the skateboarding, yeah. the surfer yeah. look. Yeah. 
Well, I had no interest in that. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to play. I just wanted to play basketball, and football, at recess, nice. and, and just get my schoolwork over so I can go play ball. Nice. I didn't care. But that didn't really go over too well. I wasn't the most popular fella. Yeah. Okay. So I said to my mom, I said, Mom, I need to go get some clothes. So we went and got Stand some clothes. Up. And ever since then, yeah. I remember going to school in my new clothes and thinking, wow, I'm feeling pretty good. I, like this. So yeah. I, was, I was feeling pimp before I knew what pimp was. <laughs> <laughs> and so it just kind of it just kind of it, it kind of snowballed from there. And then and then the other reason for the fashion, you know, when you're when you're five foot ten, like yeah. me. Right. And you're surrounded by guys that are six foot four and chiseled yeah. out of stone. Yeah. Now that's considered short in the stands. Hey, I'm yeah. short, for, especially for an athlete. I was, right? short, I was short for a for a catcher. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And so you you walk into a room, mm -hmm. you know, you go out to a restaurant, a bar. You're in your early twenties and you're surrounded by all these big, gigantic, yeah. gorgeous-looking uh, <laughs> stud dudes. Back well. <laughs> you're like, what? What do I got to do to get some attention? <laughs> okay. I had to make up for it yeah, with better I clothes, like that. Right. and I had and I had to be a better conversationalist. Yeah. So when when the been the big pretty dumb guy broke their heart, they come. <laughs> talk, they come I'm and sure talk you to did me, all right for yourself. Cross my shoulder. Yeah, that's right. Like that. So that, that that's where the, that's where the, the whole fashion thing came from. And I and I I always tell people I, I like to celebrate. Yeah, that's right. I love that. That's you guys great. are looking. You guys are all looking very, very oh, good. Tonight. Great. 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 Impressed. Great. Great. Impressed. Great. Thanks a lot, Jeezy. Yeah. So let's, let's get to know Greg Zod a little more intimately. Tell us about your family. Well, so you're a married man. You have a daughter yeah. as well, right? Yeah. yeah. Marriage, tell us about your marriage number three, child number one. Okay. So the third one's a charm. Yes, Canadian. All right. Girl. It's a okay. Canadian. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just me and my wife and my daughter. We uh, we have a tight little family unit. And, Any pets? Uh, no, no, we, 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 we lost our uh, Rottweiler Ooh. last year. Oh, my uh, man, Cato. We, we, okay. had, we had to rehome him. He started to become a little aggressive and okay. with, a, with a two year old around. Yeah. 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 So he was a 140 pound killing machine, <laughs> so it wasn't, it wasn't good. Right, so right. Uh, we, we had to go get, get him a, a better place to live. So, uh, no pets. Um, and, you know, honestly, uh, right now it, it's just, uh, you know, Dealing with a four-year-old. Last okay. night it was ballet. So she's in school now. Oh, she she goes to. I guess you could call it like junior kindergarten. Oh yeah, yeah. That's oh, what we call it here. Yeah. We <laughs> called it preschool when I was. Junior kindergarten. This is yeah, though, We do have JK. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, preschool. My son just started JK as well. So yeah, it's a yeah. Montessori type of upbringing. Okay. Pretty much, do as you know, do as you please, kind of. Right. But she's she's doing great, awesome. and so we, we enjoy that. So I'm chasing her around every day, and keeping then, you young and yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah. You know, I got a four year old daughter. I'm 47. I got a four year old daughter okay. uh, and a wife that's 10 years younger. Yeah. Oh, okay. So all the other time that I have on my hands, I spend working out, yes. right. <laughs> trying to trying to stay fit, float, <laughs> trying to stay fit, trying to stay relevant. Oh, you know, man. I don't want, I don't want her to trade me in on a younger model here. <laughs> another 10 years, so I got I got to stay. And married how long now? Uh, I think four years now. Okay. Awesome. So we, my wife and I, have been together eight. We've been married four. Excellent. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, well, Greg, tell us something that people will be surprised to learn about you. Surprised to learn about? Yeah, sometimes people don't know that. Give us the goods. Like the goods. Well, I'm definitely not as angry and disgruntled <laughs> as you most be. baseball <laughs> viewers. Yeah. The only reason for for me being disgruntled. <laughs> It's sheer mathematics. Yeah. Baseball's a game of failure. Yes, it is. My job when I was on television was to analyze what I saw on the field, the moves that the front office guys were making. Yeah. Everybody thought it was like personal, but it wasn't personal. Right, right. It was like, hey, by the way, my job is to analyze what you're doing. If a guy sucked, you got to tell him, hey, today you like, suck. Like, seriously, and, and it was so hilarious because every time I said something good right. about a player, Nobody said a word to me. It was but just like when you. As soon as I said something negative about a guy, I was like, oh. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> right, well, and they want to cry. And they want me to feel bad. <laughs> and then, of course, they wanted me fired. And I was like, wow. Where's the accountability for I mean, right. you? chose the wrong profession if you didn't want to be criticized. That's right. Well, I have thick skin. skin. That's, that's, that's right. Point. <laughs> yeah. So, so there. You know, I, I'm not an angry guy. I'm yeah. actually a happy guy. Awesome. Um, you know, you know, I have a, a wide range of, of hobbies. It's funny, people uh, ask me all the time to play baseball or softball, and I say, absolutely not. <laughs> I, I retired from baseball done, done because baseball. I didn't want to play anymore. <laughs> right. If I still wanted to play baseball and deal with the, the 
the, the mind game and yeah. all of the stress and all that, I'd rather be making those hundreds of thousands of dollars right. or millions That's of dollars. Right. Well, yes. I'm not going to go out to the to the local <laughs> diamond <laughs> and let some, some you know, weekend warrior chirp me because I haven't oh, thrown a baseball in eight years and I can't, and I can't hit a high arc. Play speed. ball! And I can't hit slow pitch softball <laughs> because I haven't thrown a bat in eight years. Yeah. I'm like, so you yeah. don't miss the game at all? Absolutely not. Right. I don't, oh, don't want to play. Time. I don't 16 wanna, years, that's a long career. Yeah, that's it is. Like that. 16 in the bigs, 22 yeah. years in pro ball, oh, and yeah. I've been Oof. doing it since I was six. Yeah, I'm not into it, man. Yeah. I, I do, I'll do just about anything but. <laughs> man, enjoying life. I love the ski. That's my oh, thing. Nice. I love the ski, yeah. and, 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 and I love the box. Okay. Yeah. So those are my hobbies. Um, every once in a while, I'll strap the pads on and go between the pipes. Oh, nice. I suck at it, but it's fun. <laughs> it's fun. It's a fun. It's like ball blocking, only it's a hockey puck. That's you right. Just jump your body in front of the puck and hope that there, somebody feels like playing defense. And they can't <laughs> it. That's about it. Awesome. So, awesome. So you're American born, born in Glendale, California. Uh, you played for nine teams throughout your MLB career, four years here in Toronto with our Blue Jays. Um, this is your home. You continue to live in the GTA. What is it that you love most about Toronto, Greg? You know what? It's the people. Uh, ever since I came here as a player, people embraced me. And it's just become second nature for me to be here. I, I, I rarely go to the States. I mean, my, I think last time I was home was probably three or four years ago. Oh, wow. With a baby, I just said, hey, Mom, Dad, I'll pay for the plane tickets, but you guys got to come to us. There's right? a lot of interesting things going on down south, but yeah. we, won't, we won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're in a good place here. <laughs> yeah, there's lots for of now. stuff. There's, lo there's lots of stuff going on. But right, the, right. Uh, you know, for me, it... it, it uh, Especially when when I had an opportunity to come and work on the television, it was either mm. be a, a an entire country's baseball analyst or right. just one team. Yeah, that's yeah, right. One 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 the region. Team represents whatever. the country. Yeah, yeah pretty much. Right. So I, I would say that the cachet was there, and, okay. and so you know, me you know, I said, okay, I want to you know, want to try some different business ventures, and I felt like right. my my cachet Toronto's was here. The place. Yeah, so right. yeah, yeah, that's and then that's the reason for for why I stayed, and you know. Up until recently, I, I was gainfully employed, so there wasn't any reason for me oh, to go. Definitely. That's, that's awesome. Well, Greg, let's get into your career in the major leagues, beginning with the uh, Orioles in 1995. What was it like to you for you breaking into the pros at this time, uh, around the age of 24? It was crazy because that was right in the middle of Cal Ripken's streak. Yeah. Okay. 95 was the year he broke it. I yeah. was in the bullpen Classic. When, Classic. during the 21-31 game. It was crazy. Oh, wow. Um, and I had known him since I was 10 years old. He was, yeah. My uncle was his first roommate in the big league. So wow. uh, what a thrill for me. Um, the game was played a little differently back then. I, mean, I, I, I can tell you, uh, average fastball was probably about 88, 89 wow. miles an hour then. Now it's probably, what, 93? Yeah. Um, the game's gone and sped up quite a bit. Um, but it was a different time. Um, obviously, you know, there was a lot of stuff going on in the game of baseball. Um, the so-called steroid era, yeah. Oh, yeah. but uh, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can call it what you want. I can tell you right now, I was around in '98 when uh, the McGuire yes. oh, so yeah. yes. when there was 35, 40,000 people showing up for batting practice <laughs> oh, uh, on, the heel, on, on, the, on the heels of a strike. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know what? The owners knew. Of course. Everybody knew yeah. what was going on, yeah. but it, yeah. but it wasn't illegal at the That's time. Right. So I say, you know, do what you got to do. Uh, it didn't bother me what was going on. I looked. Right. I looked at it. I had, your I, thing I, had my, I had my. I had my suspicions, but yeah. I didn't. I didn't really care. Um, you know, and of course, I got accused of it, and basically every year, uh, got thrown. And they threw my name in the Metro Report because of, you know some, what some bat boy said. Right. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, a lot of guys got caught up in yeah, the it was, it it was, was just, it was just a, yeah. Well, as you said, it wasn't, uh, it wasn't books at the time, yeah. so. I don't, yeah, I, I don't really, I, it didn't, didn't bother me one bit. I mean, guys, guys did what they got to do. I, I tell you what, I had a thrill, I, I had a blow watching those guys hit that, you know, oh, the, the home run so chase. It was a thrill. Yeah, you know, watching, imagine. watching, you know, watching some of those guys and, and, the, and the games that they were throwing up, it was, it was oh, yeah. fun. So he was quite a legend. It brought fans. He looks a lot different now than he did back then. I can tell you right now, without that 98 season, baseball would be a very different different game. Brought a lot of bad back Absolutely. Game. Absolutely. Absolutely. You call it what you want, but yeah. baseball was saved by Absolutely. it, so to speak. Absolutely. This is Toronto Talk Sports and More. We're here with Greg Zahn, former MLB player. 
So tell us, Greg, about your time with the Toronto Blue Jays beginning in 2004. Uh, definitely not the greatest season in franchise history. I believe things turned around the year after in 2005, uh, the year that Sky Dome was renamed to the Rogers Centre when undergrown, uh, went a lot of um, uh, upgrades or whatnot. Talk to us about your time in Toronto. What was that like uh, during that four-year tenure here uh, with the Blue Jays? It was interesting because it was it was it was a up and down time for me. I I, uh, I came to Toronto and got hot right away right. and Carlos Tosca and I had a relationship yes. Oh, yes. before that through the Marlins organization I've heard that name in a while <laughs> and uh, yeah so I got hot Kevin Cash got hurt because Kevin Cash was slated to be the starting catcher and the guy that now manages the Tampa Bay Rays yes. and I got hot and I basically took the job from him right. and that was great for me because I never thought that I was ever going to be a starter yes. in the big leagues I had gotten a chance in 98, the year they did the fire sale uh, in, in Florida, um, but I fell right on my face. I think I hit a buck 80 for uh, a full year. I was damn near terrible, uh, miserable. Um, I, I contemplated quitting the game. Uh, but I came back. I got, my, I got another chance, parlayed it into a starting job for 2000. And five and, yes. and ran with it. I had my best. The best years of my career were here in Toronto. You played alongside Molina as well, Benji Molina. Yeah, they brought yeah, yeah, yeah. Benji. Was that was a weird situation. It was a tough. That was a tough pill to swallow for me yeah. because I had had I had had a really really good year the year before right, right. Um, on they both sides of the ball. And then two weeks before spring training, they bring in Molina. <laughs> and now I'm splitting yeah, time with him. But the funny thing about it was, is he and I he and I partnered up to have. Uh, productively, the probably the best season by two catchers yeah, in Major yeah, League history. Yeah, awesome. And I actually ended up having a more productive year when he was there, right playing on. less. Yeah. So it worked out pretty good. I mean, the, the organization got got the maximum production from the two of us. Uh, it wasn't ideal playing time wise for either one of us. Benji sure. wanted to go and play every day. He was a free agent the next year too. Yeah. But, you know, like I said, up and down, I had my ups and downs, and, you know, and then, and then I stepped back into playing every day, and then they brought in Barajas. It was an ebb and a flow, and it was, but overall, the best, the best uh, years of my career. Awesome. i got to ask this, what was it like catching for uh, Doc, Roy Halliday, and of course, may he uh, rest in peace. Yeah, that guy was, he was so well prepared. It was a mental day off. It just off seemed like he was just so, like, focused, and so in the zone. And he was like a perfectionist. He was like, one of my favorite players. I used to love him. He was just, like, yeah. so intense. What was that? What was it like? Uh, well, uh, you know, he, he did all the work for you. He, he right. was, like, he used to put in an eight-hour hour day at the ballpark. The, the last place you'd ever see Doc was sitting in front of his locker, you know, twiddling his thumbs, yeah, right, right. playing, you know, Game Boy or even reading a book. He, right. he didn't mess with I heard you couldn't even really talk to him on game days, right? Yeah, no, that's an interesting story. It's come back to that. Okay. Yeah. So, because I, I used to, I used to love it. <laughs> It's one of my favorite stories now. Okay, go ahead. So, I, I just know that when, when, like, I did most of the work. When I was the, the catcher, I did most of the preparation. I, I formulated the game plan with the pitching coach. Roy had his way of doing things, and he was prepared. So the day he started was a mental day off for me. <laughs> All I had to do was keep him from being predictable. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, he was he was a, a gruff fella, especially the day he pitched. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first got there, I had more service time than anybody else on the team. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, I'm the, and I'm the catcher. And Roy would, you know, leer at me and bark <laughs> at me or whatever if I, if I said too much. And finally, I just looked at him and I said, hey, dude, I ain't no rookie. And, oh, by the way, I'm the one putting down the fingers. So unless you want me to start telling these guys what's coming, yeah. <laughs> let's just let's, let's, put some respect on my name. <laughs> let's, let's dispense with all of the drama. That's right. Oh, I said, you can treat the rest of these guys like crap all day long, but not me. That's right. Good. And, you know, Roy and I, we became friends. I, I caught more games for that guy than anybody. Yeah. And, uh. You know, I was I was on a hunting trip when he passed. Yeah. Ooh, I was, that was sitting in such sitting, a shocker. Yeah, I was sitting yeah. in a deer stand, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I turned on my phone to check because I had heard I had heard a gunshot, yeah. and I thought, okay, one of my one of the guys in my hunting party had took taken down a deer. Mm -hmm. So I turned on my my phone and it just lit up. Yes. My oh, mom, yeah. my wife, yeah. Jamie yeah. Campbell, everybody's oh, yeah. messaging me going. And I went and I it looked. It was unbelievable. Yeah. I remember I, I was watching TV. I was in complete disbelief. I was, I was with my son. We were in the bay. I remember everything. Yeah. It was like, 
Like, yeah, it was it was crazy. And I remember I'm on a hunting trip with a bunch of guys that I did hadn't known for very long, and they just basically put their arms around me because I, I collapsed. I was a puddle. Yeah. And I remember driving home uh, from Havelock. Uh, and it took me, I had to stop three or four times just to get off the road. I was yeah. shaking. Yeah. I, I yeah. couldn't even believe what had happened. It was, and then, and then of course, the network wanted me to come on and talk about it. And I, I just, I was like, oh, yeah. no, and I'm a bit of a crier. So, oh, yeah. I, I mean, especially when. Shed a few tears of mine. <laughs> well, let's just switch gears a little bit here, right, Greg? Other than baseball, of course, what other sports do you actively follow? I love, I love, I, I, I call me crazy, I just love, like, ladies tennis. Really? Okay. Nice. I, I watch it, and the reason why I watch it is because it's, they still play the game. Yeah, like, especially right. on the nice. hard courts, yeah. you actually see rallies, you see strategy, yes. whereas you see Djokovic get on the hard service, <laughs> and it's a 145 mile an hour serve, guy can't even return Ace, it, so yeah. you don't see a whole lot yeah. of gamesmanship That's right. unless you get onto the softer surfaces. Yeah. But ladies tennis, there's still artistry. I love watching it, they're in great shape. Uh, Any favorites? Uh, Serena Williams? Yeah, uh, she just, of course. Uh, yeah. Serena's, we were talking about her earlier. Serena's, her Serena's amazing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very poor behavior at the U.S. Open, yeah. but yeah. 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 Still, still an amazing competitor. Absolutely. And you know what? I'm here to tell you, you don't get the desire, mm -hmm. the drive that yeah. she has to be oh, yeah. good without every once and in a while blowing up through, a little especially bit. Yeah, like baby yeah. And yeah. of course, of course. Of I'm not excusing the behavior, oh, yeah. but, yeah. I, but, I, but I love the competitive. Oh, yeah. Absolutely the love drive. the competitive. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. Absolutely awesome. I mean, I, I still go back to the days when I, when I liked when they were playing with the wood rackets. I loved oh, wow. watching. You know, we're Chris kicking it old school here. Chrissy Lloyd, yeah. Tina Navratilova. Yeah, yeah. But that's uh, when it, that's when the men's game was still really good with McEnroe and Connors yes. uh, and Borg and oh, Becker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think they should go back to the wood rackets on the men's <laughs> That would be amazing because it would slow the game down and actually actually make these guys run around and do some things. Definitely, it'd be awesome. But I I, I love that and I and I'm. You know, and, I, and I follow boxing quite a bit. I, 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 it's a hobby of mine. So, um, and I'm trying to learn and be better at my craft. So, uh, I, any I football that. at all? No football? No, stop really? watching it. Oh, wow. I, I stop okay. watching it. Okay. I, I don't. I don't watch the NFL anymore. Okay. Uh, the game. The game just doesn't seem. Uh, the same to me as when I was a kid. Okay. Um, it's the same, and, and I don't watch the NBA anymore because they don't play defense until the fourth quarter. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> they, don't, they don't play defense. It's anymore. all about the super teams. Yeah, they, well, they, even then, they still, until the fourth quarter of game seven, they don't start playing That's defense. Right so it's yeah. like, and, and everybody wants to everybody wants to debate who the greatest greatest of all time is. I say, who's the GOAT? You know, who is this guy? Well, <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, you know, you can make an argument for a whole bunch of people, mm -hmm. but I can definitely tell you that LeBron's game would be massively different if he had Bill Lane Beer hacking the hell out of him <laughs> as he Absolutely. approached the lane. Hey, Amen. There's a difference between there's a difference between the league right. that these guys are like all big time, night and day. They, they don't play the defense. Rules, they really don't play rough. Right, yeah. They don't play. I mean, can, well, you, you can't, can't touch anybody. The rules have no. totally changed. Like I don't know how old you guys are, but yeah. growing up watching Magic and Bird yeah. Oh, yeah, and Doctor J, I was seven years old, and, and then and then the uh, and then the, uh, the, the the Bulls dynasty. Right. Oh, and, yeah. I, and, and I was a baseball teammate of Michael oh, Jordan, so oh, wow. I yeah, yeah, I know <laughs> I know watching that genre. Yeah, big time. I'm not saying LeBron's not the greatest, but his game, his his ability to score would have been a heck of a lot. Less with all the welts on his arms. Well, I'm not going to take from his game. Still a great player. No, 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 no. Prob and probably yeah, the greatest yeah. of all time. Well, but the scoring, debatable. the scoring yeah. records. Yeah, I'm still a Michael Jordan fan. Yeah. I don't know about you, but that guy. Well, uh, and I, I mean, let's be honest. The, <laughs> we, we could probably say the greatest basketball player of all time is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Look at the numbers. Look there. at the numbers. Yeah. Nobody else is compared. Oh, yeah. He's, He's got the greatest there. numbers of any the, basketball uh, player in history. Points Kareem, Kareem. Yep. And nobody and everybody just thinks, oh, you know, he he was tall and get the same. I have yeah. Kareem yeah. as uh, number two on my list, but no, he's number two. He's who's their good. number one? I got MJ like you. Got MJ number one. Number one. So we all, I think we all agree. Yeah. I, I I would say I would say Kareem. If I if I had to go, depending on what mood you catch me in, the lowest he'd ever be would be one B. Okay, okay well, one B. That's great. One B. So listen, great guys, we kind of wind down things here. Uh, tell us what you're up to these days. Tell us about uh, Manalist TV. 
Well, you know, it started off as, you know, kind of a studio show, kind of a reproduction of what I was doing. But I was covering the entire game of baseball. Um, you know, and over the course of a couple of months, you know, we, we were trial and error, trying to give the fans what they wanted. It became really evident that they wanted, you know, more Blue Jay centric mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. And so we like, we tried to tried to experiment and give it to them. Now, right now, it's it's the Manalist TV is we put we put the video up for my podcast. Okay. The podcast has been um, a better format for me to really kind of dive into stuff, mm -hmm. uh, get into topics, uh, a lot like we are now. It's it, it's easier for me to express myself when I've got a minute and a half. Yeah. Right. Uh, versus. 30 seconds so uh, just just more in depth on a lot of the Blue Jays topics um, a lot of the moves that are going on obviously with the team struggling this year there's a lot of questions oh, yeah. so I'm doing that and then my other project is I've opened up a baseball academy the Greg's on baseball yes. academy awesome about that. Uh, we're going to be working out of uh, a, a 36,000 square foot building in Kleinberg on highway 27 um, it's the old uh, uh, Kleinberg Film Studio, and then they called it Devon Sports Center, but I think they're renaming it right now as, right. as the baseball barn. But I'm going to be teaching kids as young as six, All as right. old as 18, right. the fundamentals of the game. I'm, Sign up my son. I'm passionate. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be doing it. Uh, we do private lessons. We do group group stuff. These are the fundamentals. Of the Absolutely. Game. I, Very nice. You know, a friend of mine's kid asked me to run a practice, and I was heartbroken watching twelve year olds not be able to play catch. Oh, Their parents had not taught them, and it, and it wasn't necessarily the parents' fault. God bless them. They're they're volunteering their time, but they don't know anything about baseball. That's right. So, I'll do it. Let me teach nice. your kids how to do it. So give them a fighting chance because I want them to be lifelong fans. Yeah. I want them to play well into their teen years okay, for sure. and for all these kids out there that are you know staring down the idea of their parents paying 12 15 grand a year for a travel team mm -hmm. well, why would you want to do that if you can't hit somebody in the chest right. if you can't if you can't hit a fastball down the middle if you don't play fundamentally sound you have no chance to, to right. go anywhere so come out to my school and I'll give you the fundamentals I'll give you the foundation yeah. so you can build your game exactly Awesome, awesome, good stuff. Yeah, it's good stuff. So we'll definitely plug that in our credits. Uh, so we're gonna have a little bit of fun with you, Greg, as we wind down this segment here. We're gonna play a little game called TTS Rapid Questions. So we got ten questions for you. They're very random questions, and uh, there's no time for you to consider or ponder anything. You just gotta give us the very first thing that comes to mind. It's dangerous. Rapid fire. <laughs> dangerous. Are you ready? I am ready. You are ready. Okay. So TTS Rapid Questions. There's ten of them. Number one. Favorite food. Steak. The last movie you watched? Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> uh, Jack Reacher, Never Go Back. All right. Mayweather or McGregor? Mayweather. Describe MLB umpire Doug Eddings in one word. Full of himself. Well, that's more than one word. <laughs> Cocky. <laughs> Cocky. What do you love most about your wife? She's a thug. All <laughs> right. Who's winning the Super Bowl this season? And we just spoke about the Battle uh, Follow NFL. The Rams. I'm picking, Rams. Rams. I'm right. picking my hometown team. Okay. The Rams. All right. Awesome. Good I heard they're pretty good. Cool. Uh, what do you got here? Number seven. Budweiser or Molson Canadian? Uh, God, I can't stay with my roots. Budweiser. Okay. Red label for red deck. Well, <laughs> all right. Uh, favorite teammate. Favorite teammate of all time was a guy named Dave McCarty. He was an okay. arrogant Stanford prick that absolutely... <laughs> he just happened to gravitate towards him. And <laughs> well, he, he liked to make fun of me because I didn't go to college. He went to Stanford. Yeah. But he and I were just thick as thieves. We were the, awesome. we were the best friends. I love it. I think he taught me how to do crossword puzzles. I'm oh, not, I'm not, I ain't mad at him, but he was... He, oh, man. He, nice. used, he used to rub me good. Two more. Biggest pet peeve. Entitlement. Okay. And lastly, I love this one. What sound does a donkey make? That's my favorite donkey one. TTS, oh my goodness, that was fun, Greg. Listen, <laughs> thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for sharing. It was a pleasure definitely getting to know you a lot better. Um, and you're going to stick around with us for our MLB roundtable discussion coming up next. Uh, we're definitely looking forward to that. Thanks again, Greg. Toronto Talk Sports and more.